Neighborhood, JDU Western Hills Baptist Church coming to you today, reading from the book of Revelation, Revelation 18. So back in chapter 17, we talked about waters, and our Father let us know what those waters were, and we learned that the waters are people. More importantly, from those waters came the one world system. And from that one world system is where the beast rose out of. Then God let us know in the last verse what that great city was, the city of Babylon. And when you hear Babylon, think of Babel, in other words, confusion. It is the confusion that brings to pass the whoredom and delicacies that make people think they are royalty following the true king, when in reality, they're following the fake king, the Antichrist. And you see a lot of confusion today. So many false religions, so many false teachers and prophets. So many folks falling prey to these usurpers. Can you imagine what will happen when the Antichrist appears? He will come in the name of religion. He will come and, and end all wars. He will come in peace. Fact is, he, he will come in the name of peace. What will happen when the Antichrist appears and promises to pay off all your bills, all your debt, when he seemingly ends world hunger and becomes the world's problem solver? What will happen then? The whole world will follow after him. But there is only one King of Kings, the one Lord of Lords, as we found in Revelation 17, 14. So starting in Revelation 18 today, we we have a bit of a summary going on here. Chapter 18 is similar to chapter 17. It's sort of an overlay, but 18 has a lot more depth and clarity of the destruction of that world system known as Babylon. Let's get into it. Chapter 18, verse 1 reads, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. Well, after what things? Well, after the destruction of Babylon. Chapter 17, verse 15. This, this chapter here we're in goes the complete destruction of Babylon. And of course, Babylon is John's metaphorical name for the evil world power and all it represents. Essentially, uh, everything and anything that tries to block God's purposes will come to a violent end. So what do we see here? We we see this angel having great mighty power coming down from heaven. We see the mighty angel lighted with his glory and his truth. In verse two reads, and he mightily and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So the great city of confusion, Babylon, has fallen. And you you can sort of see the pride that follow fall, <clears throat> see the pride that the followers of the Antichrist have as they continue to hold on to their their captain. That city of confusion will be no more. It says it'll never exist again. Confusion, and there's no reason for us to be confused. God has given us this letter, the Bible, that goes into the very specifics and clearly simplifies in chronological order of the events that come to the end of the earth age. So there's no excuse for us to be confused. All we need to do is to read his letter, the letter that he gave us. So here we finally see at last that confusion has fallen and there is time no more. All the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. This is for all nations. This refers to the kings of the earth, talking about earthly kings, politicians, so forth. The, the word abundance here is power, the power for delicacies. This is nothing new. Power brings money, and money brings delicacy. Merchants in the Roman Empire grew rich by exploiting the simple pleasures of the society. And many business people today do the same thing. Businesses and governments are often based on greed, money, and power. Many bright individuals are tempted to take advantage of, a, of an evil system to enrich themselves. Um, Christians, uh, you and me, we're warned to stay away from the lure of money and the status and the good life. We are to live accordingly 
to the values of Christ exemplified, that being service, giving, self-sacrifice, obedience, and truth. Wealth and money, that is delicacies of this world. If you can call all the delicacies, talking about wealth and prosperity, do you know how many people you can buy with that? It's power. You can buy a lot of people, but there's a lot of people that are not for sale. They hold true to the word of God no matter what. But one of the greatest weapons Satan has is wealth, and he knows how to use it. One one world wealth is an awesome thing, how people can be handled, especially if they've been put through a tough time. Uh, money, wealth, and power can control many. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye may not be partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plague. Come out of her, my people. In other words, do not participate in her sins, so that you will not be involved in the ruin that would come upon her. You'll find such passages as this in Jeremiah 5.16 and Isaiah 48.16. Twenty. This passage is read, My people, go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce angle of the Lord. In other words, you don't want any part of these plagues. And these these aren't Satan's plagues we're talking about here. We are talking about the plagues God intends to bring upon the rudiments of the world, that's to say the element, as it's written in Second Peter three ten, which simply means that which is negative. That is that which is against God. It's going to be destroyed, and these plagues shall bring that to pass. You don't want any part of that, and that's why it's written. Come out of her. Come out of her confusion. Step into the light. Don't walk in the darkness and stay with the truth. Well, how do you stay with the truth? How do you do that? You stay, stay with the Father. Stick with him. Talk to him. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. See, this is talking about Babylon, and will receive her just reward. Why? Her work and her workings have reached all the way to to heaven, and God has promised. He promised in the Song of Moses, Deuteronomy 32, as covered in the 15th chapter of Revelation, God's vengeance belongs to Him. Vengeance um, belongs to God. Their vine is not our vine; their way not being our way. You want to stick to the Father. And God is not the author of confusion, that is to say, Babylon. So why would any Christian want to stay in Babel? Talking about those that confuse the word of God and amplify babbling, which is anything but God's word, anything but God's truth. We're talking about confusion there, and there's sure, sure a lot of confusion on so-called Christian TV anymore. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her work and the cup which she had filled fill to her double. Oh, in other words, Babylon is about to receive twice the wrath and destruction ever perpetrated by her. How much she has glorified herself and lived del- deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. See, talking about Babylon here, who has had interaction with all nations, and with whom all nations have been involved in fortification, now says, I'm a queen, not a widow. I'm never impoverished, nor in need of anything. This is kind of like those that reject Jesus Christ. They will fall for the world system, and not see the folly of following the beast. And shall see no sorrow. This is really a sad state. This this doesn't mean Babylon will not experience sorrow, but that she refuses to see it. Consumed with a let them eat cake mentality, Babylon is so absorbed in her own delicacies, her own materialism, her own economy, that she does not even see the sorrow of the people within her own boundaries. The people of Babylon had lived in luxury and pleasure, and the city boasted, I sit as queen. And will not be sour, sour. But know what? The powerful, wealthy people of this world are susceptible to the same attitude. 
a person who is financially comfortable often feels invulnerable, secure, and in control, feeling no need for God or anything else. And this kind of attitude defies God and his judgment against his heart. God wants to be our provider. God wants our love. We are told to avoid Babylon's sins. If you are financially secure, don't become complacent and deluded by the world of self-sufficiency. We are to use our resources, our financial resources, to help others advance God's kingdom. After all, money can be here one day and gone the next. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and shall be utterly burned with fire, for song is the Lord God who judges her. Day, that's the day of the Lord, the first day of the millennium, that day when every knee shall bow to the true Messiah, and many tears will be shed for those that didn't make it. Tears not shed by those that make it, but tears shed by those that don't. And God would say, you claim to be a queen, and you see no sorrow, but I look at you differently. You're going to be judged thoroughly. In the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived delicately with her, they'll bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Kings of the earth. This isn't those that came with Satan. But this is talking about the leaders, politicians of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, so bewail her. They, they sing sad songs for that state of confusion. And they lament when they shall see the smoke of her burning. And this kind of tells you where their heart, mind, and body, and soul are, certainly not with Jesus Christ. Their heart, mind, body, and soul or with the ways of the world, that this condition that the whole world pours after called confusion. The whole world pours after money, and money is almost always associated with power. Babylon. Babylon is the richness of world, worldism. Babylon in past has always been a symbol of power and richness. And in the one world system, it will be much the same as Babylon of old. A system that appears magnificent, enough power and money to solve the world problems. A, a system that seems perfect and indestructible. How can that happen, you might ask? And, and more importantly, who wouldn't want that? I mean, the world wants that now. Think of riches. Think of riches. If you have a one-world system, there's no need for an army. The one-world system doesn't fight itself. And all those money, monies are tendered um, that would have gone to the war effort. They're tendered, placed right in the coffers of state. And think about that globally. How much money does the world spend yearly on war efforts? Well, in 2021, the, the staggering number of money spent on war efforts exceeded $2 trillion. That's a lot of money. Think of the work that could be done around the world with $2 trillion. The seemingly good that could be done with that kind of money. And no more war, no more poverty, world hunger would cease. I mean, doesn't that sound wonderful? Who wouldn't want that? Uh, but that all comes with a price, and that is submission to the Antichrist. No wonder the followers of the world system lament. You will see these people moaning and groaning and crying for her. That is to say, confusion, old Babylon, the power, the greatness, the riches. Can read. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Both sides of the world system will lose everything when it collapses. All that they've worked for in a lifetime to build up will be destroyed. Those who work only for material rewards will have nothing when they die or when their possessions are destroyed. Christians. Our faith, our character, our relationships with other believers will not be lost in so much more important than any amount of money, power, or pleasure. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Why will the merchants weep? No man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Is this because everything's destroyed? 
I don't think so. We have to remember to think in dimensions here. What happens at the seventh trump? First Corinthians fifteen fifty two tells us that in the wink of an eye, one twinkle of an eye, we are all changed. We're changed at the seventh trump from a physical corruptible body to a spiritual body. We are changed from this three dimensional body that we're bound to um, that of a dimension we can't even imagine. And not, and not just the good will be changed, but the good, bad, and the ugly would be changed also. Everybody will be changed into a spiritual body at that sound of the seventh trump. So the goods and merchandise of this world in that day and that dimension will not be important. There's a great change coming. Remember, Zechariah 14 talks about that melting away when the change of bodies comes to pass in that dimension. Things are quite different. They are controlled by Almighty God. At that time, talking about the seventh trump, you, you have no need for the merchandise of deception. That great mighty city of confusion might want to peddle with its false teaching. Because it's not tangible, it doesn't matter. Twelve reads the merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and of pearls, fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet, and all fine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass, iron, and marble. In other words, all those things will have no value there. The gold, silk, silver, gems, fine linen, and all those items that are deemed precious in our sight today will have no value then. They'll have no value because we have all been changed into spiritual bodies. And cinnamon, odors, ointment, frankincense, and wine, and oil, fine flour, wheat, beast, and sheep, and horses, chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. All the precious perfumes and ointments, all the fine wine and oil, and all the animals, chariots, or in our case today, expensive automobiles, uh, all of it, there's no market for it. But more importantly, no more slavery. We are all servants of the living God. But guess what? This is what Satan wants. He wants to enslave everybody he possibly can. But Ezekiel 18, 4, lets us know that all souls belong to God. They are his to do with as he pleases in his time. Satan, Satan will have, be of no power. Satan has no power over us. And the fruits that thy soul lusteth after are departed from thee, and all things which were daintily and godly, goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. Why are the fruits that were lusted after departed gone? Well, they don't exist. They're gone. Again, we're at the seventh trump in a different dimension. We're in a spiritual body. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. In other words, they're out of business. They're out of business. The, the merchants of the Bible are out of business. Talking about those that led astray God's people, the false teachers and the prophets. And saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Uh, sort of referring, referring back to uh, <clears throat> verse 10, that city of Babylon is described as clothes, and the most rich and frivolous articles of clothing. Again, those tied to the world system will lose everything when it collapses. Those that uh, or who work for material rewards will have nothing when they die or when their possessions are destroyed. The good news as Christians, we will always retain our faith, our character, and our righteous act. They will never be lost. They're with us forever. For in one hour, so great riches to come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as paid by sea stood afar off. So when it comes to pass, it will come to naught. Not meaning worthless. It doesn't mean a thing. There's no more commerce. No more commerce. All of the, the great ships that came there to trade, all down the tube, all things worthless. 
in this new dispensation. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Talking about Babylon here, that great city. Talking about her destruction. That which they had a deep interest in is destroyed. The world system is gone. Now they lift up their voice in lamentation. And 19 reads, And they cast dust on their heads and cried, wheeling and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich and all that had shipped in the sea by reason of her haughtiness, for in one hour she is made desolate. In one hour she's made desolate. It doesn't take long for God's plan to complete. God can take what man takes to be valuable and make it useless. For us, our works go with us. They are in the book of life. Don't put value in the things of this world. Put your ducks in a row and separate what is worthwhile and what isn't. In verse 20 reads, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. I really like this verse. The people's response to the destruction of Babylon is to weep and wail. But heaven's response is to rejoice. All those souls that were butchered, led astray, you know, they'll be taken care of. A mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. This great angel took up a stone like a giant great millstone, and the angel cast it into the sea. Not only like cast it in the sea, but says with violence. In other words, this means mighty fall. Think how fast a giant millstone would sink. Something that big isn't going to surface. And it says they're cast into the sea. This is a term meaning the utter ruin of the city, an indication that the city would be completely destroyed as that stone was covered by the water. Now what a time will this will be. Think about it. Confusion is gone forever. We're at the first day of the millennium, and every knee will bow, and the truth will be known, and every soul will know that. In 22 reads, in the voice of the harpers, musicians, and pipers, trumpeters, they'll be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whosoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. The idea here is that Babylon would be brought to utter destruction. That, that fun city that was so entertaining and full of fun, and music is no more. The city's desolate. The harpers, musicians, the pipers, and trumpeters, they won't have anything going for them. No more commerce, no more millstone. As believers in that day, we'll be taking manna from heaven right here on earth. And what a time that will be. In verse 23 reads, And the light of the candle shall shine no more at that at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for the merchants were the great men of earth, for by their sorceries were all nations deceived. Candles shall shine no more. And yet this is another image of, of desolation, as if the lights were put out, talking about total darkness. In the voice of the bridegroom, and the bride shall be heard no more. Why is that? Because there's no marriages in heaven. The merchants were the great men of earth, for by their sorceries were all nations deceived. Well, you have no more merchants. By the sorceries were all nations deceived. Sorceries. Sorceries in, in Greek means pharmacy. It means pharmacy. And I think of this uh, sort of being those false religions that ended up being like a drug or drug-like thinking to so many, almost like the, the false prophets, false teachers that were feeding people drugs and put them on a tip they never came back from, those that thinking they were in a fine religion. Uh, but they were in a religion of lies, the fire, brimstone from the Antichrist. It's sort of like taking 
the prescription of, of bad medicine, spiritually speaking. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. When the Babylon came to be destroyed, her real character was seen. All those slain by Babylon, the world system, in the name of religion, are found in her. So numerous have been the slain, so constant bloody have been persecutions, that it might be said that all the blood ever shed has been poured out there. And so as we end this chapter, we see payday coming to pass. Payday for Babylon, that, that world system that caused all the confusion to the world. This week, after 19, we'll see a little glimpse of heaven then. Amen and amen.